The Dazzlings. Without a doubt, these three characters managed to remain in high regard by many people after their debut in 2014's Rainbow Rocks. It's safe to say that their initial reception was beyond many expectations following the first movie. But the question still stands. How did they pull this off? Something about them makes them stand out among a large cast of antagonists across Equestria Girls. Something that might not be noticeable at first glance. And that's what we'll try to find out today. So without further ado. Let's begin. To start off, the movie does a great job of introducing them in such a way that they are recognizable and memorable. There's Sonata, the bubbly and innocent of the group, Arya the grumpy one who hates everyone, and Adagio who's the leader and also hates everyone. Right from the start they have defining personalities and roles that play off of each other, which creates simple yet effective dynamics and chemistry. They not only interact as the bad guys of the story, but also as a dysfunctional group among themselves. It's this possibility to see them in another light that shows sides of their personalities we wouldn't see otherwise, bringing the characters to life. And it's this dynamic within the party that gives them an edge above other antagonists. Moving on, the Dazzlings succeed at what I will refer to as the thematic conflict. As you might know, all aspects of a story are held together by the theme of the story, acting as some sort of backbone. And here is where the Dazzlings pass flawlessly. As for Rainbow Rocks, music is clearly a recurring theme throughout the entire runtime. And what are the Dazzlings? Singers. How do they affect the story? With music. How are they a threat? They use music to manipulate people. What is their goal? To gain adoration and power through music. How are they defeated? Through music. In summary, the Dazzlings fit so well in this movie, because the movie itself is designed for them to be the antagonists. They serve not only as an opposition to our main cast, but also to the theme of the story as well. While the message is to use music for good purposes, the Dazzlings go against this idea, and use it for selfish goals. In the end, the story and the antagonists are related in such a perfect way that both enhance each other and thus allows them to leave a bigger impact. In simple terms, Rainbow Rocks can't work without the Dazzlings, just as the Dazzlings can't work without Rainbow Rocks. Finally, there is one aspect I have to talk about. Their conflict with the protagonists. Rainbow Rocks is probably the best at handling this. The Dazzlings work so well, because they cause an actual impact on the protagonists. They affect their relationships and dynamics to a degree we never saw again. An essential role an antagonist must fulfill, is being capable of clashing with the protagonist, forcing them to fail or change in order to succeed. This is something we see in the movie, as the main group slowly deteriorates, and falls apart with the help of a little push by the Dazzlings. It's because of them that we get to see the best and worst of the rainbows, something only the Dazzlings have achieved to this extent. This allows them to be seen as a serious threat, and thus making the audience take them seriously as well. It's their ability to be not only entertaining, but also fearful that makes them worthy of being respected. Obviously there's the fact that they have other things going for them. Their songs are absolute hits, as well as their stellar on-screen presence and performances. But what I wanted to talk about in this video, is the reasons we often overlook, but heavily matter at the moment of deciding how we look at these characters. Because they just might be, what makes them iconic, 